Russian view of world news on the latest news channel. Watch the video to the end and subscribe. Further only more interesting. US presidential election, why Trump's double-digit lag is not a disaster. According to key state data, an eccentric politician has a good chance of re-election. There is a year left before the US presidential election. And in order to understand what Trump's chances are of winning in 2020, it is necessary to understand that the American election is extremely specific, the one who gets fewer votes can win. At first glance, this seems like complete nonsense, but given the peculiarities of this country, the existence of an electoral institution seems logical and justified, some subjects are too different from the rest regarding the requirements for voters. Thus, the winner is determined not by the largest states in the population of California and Texas, where Democrats and Republicans traditionally dominate, respectively, but by the fluctuating states. He states of 2020. Which states can be called hesitant is a question without a clear answer. Probably, each political scientist will give his own list, depending on his views on intra-American processes, party addictions and other factors. In principle, states tend to change their political coloring over time, turn blue, become more pro-democratic, or blush, pro-republican. This does not make it possible to accurately compile a stable list of fluctuating states, because yesterday's battlefield may turn into a quiet haven today. But we can say for sure which states will determine the fate of the next presidential election. In 2020, it will be Florida, 29 electoral votes, Pennsylvania, 20, Michigan, 16, North Carolina, 15, Arizona, 11, and Wisconsin, 10. In 2016, Trump won all these states, which guaranteed him a final victory in the election. Now the situation is somewhat more complicated, the popularity ratings of the US president are in the region of 40%, and regularly reports that Trump is inferior to Biden by about 10% of the vote in the country. Often this is served with sauce that the American leader is in trouble, and only a miracle can save him. This is fundamentally wrong, because it is necessary to look at the fluctuating states of this cycle, and there the situation is different. Northern Oscillating States All fluctuating states can be conditionally divided into two groups, Northern and Southern. The Northern States, Pennsylvania, Michigan and Wisconsin, are close to each other and make up the so-called Rust Belt, where a large number of enterprises are concentrated. Leftist ideas are much more popular in this environment than in the rest of America, which is why this region is a priority for leftists, primarily for socialist Bernie Sanders. Biden really remains the most popular Democrat in the whole country, but his level of support in the North is significantly lower than in the more southern states. In Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, he overtakes Trump by 3%, and in Michigan, he is on a par, which is an alarming sign for the ex-vice president, because the social base of these states, according to surveys, is not enthusiastic about him, and many people have it exclusively as the strongest of the Democrats. 
Biden's audience is very limited by the political center, and it is not as active as those of Trump's supporters, especially since he is unlikely to expand this base. He will not entice the radical supporters of Sanders and Warren, but lose the support of moderate voters in a case of scandals can be easy. It is significant that Bernie Sanders is the only one of the Democrats who overtakes Trump in all three states at once, although his advantage does not exceed anywhere else 2%. However, unlike Biden, Sanders can expand his influence on sympathetic Democrats. The centrists will have to make a choice anyway, and this can become decisive. It is significant that Elizabeth Warren, despite her leftist program, is not particularly popular in these states. She is not ahead of the president anywhere and she just catastrophically loses to Trump in Michigan minus 6%. Many attribute this to the fact that Warren is not so well known in the states, given that this is her first campaign throughout the country. If so, then everything is fixable, because she can fight for the Sanders audience, the only question is whether this is enough to straighten the situation. Southern Oscillating States In the South there are no geographically very close fluctuating states, but they all have one specificity. They are much more conservative in nature and prefer liberalism to socialism. That is why Joe Biden is in the best position among the Democrats in the Southern region. According to surveys, Biden leads the way in Florida, ahead of Trump by 2%, while in Arizona he outperforms his opponent by an impressive 5%. It is significant that in North Carolina it is 2% behind Trump, but for the Democrats it is all very bad, the rest of the candidates lose even more. The South is the weak spot of the socialists, and this is especially noticeable according to the results of Bernie Sanders. If in the North it surpasses Trump in all fluctuating states, then in the South it is inferior in all. A little more successful is his Elizabeth Warren, she overtakes Trump in Arizona by 2% but is seriously inferior in Florida and North Carolina. Victory in these states looks like an extremely difficult task. Florida has been blushing successively in recent years. Both senators from it are Republicans, and the governor is a Republican with a very high rating, which Trump is guaranteed to use. North Carolina already now looks like one of the most difficult challenges for the Democrats, because Trump supporters there are significantly more. But Arizona can be fought as the left, Warren and Sanders. What's next? According to experts, to win the election, Either side will have enough success in four of these six vacillating states. If these states are divided three by three, the difference can be literally a couple of electoral votes. It is also possible that both candidates will get 269 votes each, and then everything will be extremely confusing and nervous. For this, Trump needs to take Florida, North Carolina and Pennsylvania, but lose the rest of the vacillating states, and all the remaining entities vote without surprises. However, a big surprise will be just such a vote, which will not present any sensation. In the end, there are a number of states where the intrigue is visible now, and even if it is not as obvious as in the above six key states, 
it can come to the fore in November. Thank you.